Life is full of unexpected surprises. Some good, some bad, and some that for better or worse can change your life permanently. If something should happen to you where you cannot make decisions for yourself anymore, what do you do? The best thing you can do is to appoint someone you know and trust as a power of attorney. In this video, we'll explain what you'll need to know. Come on in and have a seat. I'm Ben Weaver, Illinois attorney and founder of 23 Legal. I provide personal, practical, and professional legal services when it comes to guiding clients to the best estate plans for them. And in this video, we'll talk about what you need to know in order to appoint someone as your POA or power of attorney for healthcare in Illinois. That's right, we're located in the Chicago suburbs and this video discusses POAs in Illinois. Now POAs generally operate in the same manner from state to state, but each state also has its own nuances. If you're watching this in New Mexico or in New Canada, which is a town in Maine, Remember that the information in this video is oriented towards Illinois, and there will be some fine tuning needed for your state. Now, first, what does a power of attorney really do? Well, with a power of attorney for healthcare, you give someone else the authority to make healthcare decisions on your behalf. Do they immediately take control of all your decisions, medical records, and entire life? Well, they could, if that's how you want it but the vast majority of times that does not happen. Now we'll get into the specifics of that in a bit, but just know before we get into this that a POA is fairly customizable to your wishes and desires of how you want to be cared for. Signing over a POA does not mean you immediately lose all agency. So who usually is appointed as a POA? If you're married, it's probably your spouse, but get this. Did you know that just because you're legally married to someone, that does not give them the legal authority to automatically make medical decisions on your behalf if you cannot? It's not a marital perk. If you're operating on the assumption that your spouse is your backup without the proper paperwork, well, then you're wrong. Aside from a spouse, a healthcare power of attorney agent could be one of your children, a sibling, or your parent. Maybe your sister is a doctor who you trust to make a medical decision under extraordinary emergency pressure much more efficiently than that hypochondriac husband of yours. Or maybe you have a close friend that you talk about life, work, finances, and health. Well, that person would be a great candidate for your POA agent. What if you're now an adult? And I don't mean metaphorically or emotionally, I mean legally. When you turn 18, in the eyes of the law, you're an adult, and therefore, your parents can no longer make decisions on your behalf like they used to. It may seem like it's a bit early to some people to sign a POA at the young age of 20, 19, heck, even on your 18th birthday. However, without a POA, a parent cannot automatically make decisions for their college freshman if they become sick or suffer an accident. Once a child is 18, a parent is no longer privy to medical records without consent. And if an 18 year old is so sick they cannot give consent, it severely limits a parent's options. By authorizing a parent to act as a POA agent, the parent can stay in the loop and potentially save their child's life. Okay, so we had mentioned we would talk about how you can customize your POA to your life situations. How do we do that? Let's look at some options. You can pick and choose for your POA the best for you. Again, fine tuning references Illinois POAs. Definitely check out the rules and laws for POAs in your state too. How about duration? How long would you like the POA to operate? Maybe you're going in for a minor surgery and only need it one for a couple days. Or maybe you'd like one to last indefinitely into the future. The length of time is up to you. When does the POA take effect? Well, it can take effect immediately or upon a written determination by a doctor. Maybe you like your spouse to be able to speak with medical professionals about your condition, but don't necessarily want a spouse making decisions for you yet. Hey, that's a possibility too. 
Guardianship. If it's deemed medically necessary to appoint a legal guardian on your behalf, a POA for healthcare can notify the court and the world of your preferred guardian. It's a simple couple of lines that can save a lot in time and money in court expenses and legal fees. Are there any specific medicines, drugs, or treatments that you do not want to be given under any circumstances? Would you like to inform anyone of any religious or cultural observations during treatment? Sure, of course you can specify those desires in the POA. What about end of life decisions? The DNR, do not resuscitate, or we can go the other way with the YPR. Yes, please resuscitate me. Through the POA, you get to provide your end of life choice to help guide your loved one with a potentially difficult final decision. So there you have it, a POA for healthcare. Emergencies are never planned around a set schedule. Having a document in place to give a loved one the authority to act on your behalf when needed is extremely important. And getting into the nitty gritty details of knowing what you're getting can help comfort you knowing the decisions you're making or someone else is making for you are being handled exactly as you hope. If you found this helpful, please share this video with someone you know who may need to see it. A new college student, a friend who found that recently sick, family who knows their time is coming, please show them this and help them know that they can get the comfort they need. I'm Ben Weaver, we'll be taking new clients and I'll see you in the next video.